What's up? It's your boy Heaven Hollywood back on the IE Network. And this is the Heaven Hollywood Report. And let's get to it. Shout out to my sponsor in case you didn't know. That's ICYDK.blog. Once again, ICYDK.blog. Make sure you check them out on all mobile devices in the world wide web. Before we get started, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss one video. Let's go. And we're going to start it off with that girl, Coco Bailey, Chloe Bailey, and we're just going to review the How Does It Feel video. Now, number one, the, the video is about two minutes and 56 seconds long. So that's the new thing now with songs. They're like mostly all the songs are under three minutes. To me, the songs should be, you know, no less than three minutes and 30 seconds. We want to, you know, I would say, I'd say maybe around there, three and a half minutes. You know, all songs back in the day were over four minutes, you know, some five minutes. But that's a new thing now. They're making videos so short. People got ADD these days. Plus, when the sort of the song, the... It's uh, better for TikTok and stuff like that. But the visuals with this with this video was A1. You know, when it comes out, you know, she, she lights the candle. Uh, and then it's kind of like the, um, the sand. A certain amount of time, you know, uh, before the sand goes out of the hourglass. You know, Chris Brown appears. And it's kind of like they're back-to-back -back talking to each other but just not face to face. And then that barrier kind of breaks and then she like they're in the same room. The uh I love the visuals. I love the the, the chemistry they have together. The intensity of the scenes. You know, Chloe Bailey is as I said before, she is right now to me when you start talking about the young vocalist and the young vocal, when you say young vocals, you can say the Summer Walkers of the world, the LMAs of the world, the um, SZA of the world, you know, those girls. To me, vocal-wise, none of them can touch Chloe Bailey. I think Chloe Bailey is ahead of the pack when it comes to that. As an artist, she's becoming a multifaceted artist because she already knows how to make beats. She can do production. She can do arrangements. She can do engineering. She can do, you know, a lot vocal arrangements. She can do a lot of different things. Plays instruments, compose, so songwrite. Chloe Bailey right now, to me, is the premier young artist. You know, full musician. Right, so... Just had to put together the string of hits to match it. And this song is a hit. I mean, there's no questions to hit. The only um, criticism I have, I have two things as far as the video goes uh, to criticize about the video. Number one, I think the song is just entirely too short. So the video is going to be too short. And number two, I would have liked to see one little, when they, when they come face to face, I would have loved to see like a ballroom dance slash hip-hop, you know, like a ballroom hip-hop type dance of them together, at least for a few minutes. He even had a little dance sequence with Normani. I would have loved for like kind of like a ballroom that's kind of like their last dance since the hourglass, with, you know, the, the uh, sand and hourglass slipping out, and then you just keep going back to that. Somewhere, and then it's like they're taking their last dance together. I would have loved that, kind of like a ballroom type thing, you know. So that that would have been fly. That would have been fly. Other than that, I love the video. I love the visuals to it. I love the the you know the little theme they had there. And Chris Brown killed this song. Chloe, you know, Chloe's gonna be Chloe. Um, and all this controversy about the song and the song was absolutely. It's, it's a great song. It's a hit. I just wish it was longer. All right, so I give this, I definitely give this song an eight point five out of ten. The video only because I think it was missing a dance um, sequence, and this was a little longer. So I'm going to give the video 
a 7.8 out of 10. All right, so congratulations to that girl, Coco Bailey, a.k.a. Chloe Bailey. Moving on to your girl, Doja Cat. And Doja Cat had the internet going crazy with these bitches. She had, you know, very Masonic type, occult type, demonic type pictures, you know, all in the red. I've been seeing a lot of that lately from a lot of different artists. Sam Smith performed in red. Rihanna performed in red. Now you got Doja Cat taking pictures in red. And then she adds on the devil horns and then these things that she's taking the pictures with. They look very, you know, Baphomet-like. You know, very symbolic, Masonic type, type figures she's taking pictures with. And, you know, a lot of people was in her comments saying, what are you doing? You know, Doja Cat definitely sold her soul. It's another. She just keeps saying, yeah, so I'm just going to keep trolling you people and setting and the other. But, you know, regardless of, of Doja Cat making jokes of it, you know, this stuff is all, this all of this stuff is not coincidence. Let's put it that way. So, and like I said, live your life and stuff. Make your own decisions. But, you know, that these outfits and stuff the Doja Cat's wearing, you know, little, it's a little much. And, again, it's, that's, it's to the point now where it's in plain sight. Nobody cares about nothing. No one, nobody cares who sees it. Nobody cares who talks about it. They don't care. If they want to show it, if they want to go out like that, that's the way they're going to go out. And they're basically saying nobody's going to do anything about it. So Doja Cat's pitch is a little strange and have a lot of people talking. Moving on to Rihanna. Now, they're saying that Rihanna got over 100 FCC complaints filed saying that her show, her Super Bowl performance, was borderline porn. Huh? Now, maybe I got to get a new TV. I mean, I do love Rihanna. Maybe I wasn't looking at this, you know, with an objective mind. But what part of Rihanna's um, performance, first of all, she's pregnant. We're talking about pregnant porn now. What part of Rihanna's performance as she's pregnant, fully clothed, so well, not like she was out there in a bikini or something other. What part about that was close to, to, to pornographic? Why? Because she grabbed the crotch and, grabbed the crotch and sniffed her fingers? That was actually kind of hot. That, <laughs> that was sexy. But, I mean, you're calling it the her whole performance pornographic because she grabbed the crotch and sniffed her fingers? I mean, that, that uh, performance was about as far from pornographic as you can get. And But they had said it was a 110 or something like that complaints. I look at it this way. It was 110 complaints, and how many people saw it? Millions? Eh, I guess Brianna be all right. But it does kind of baffle me that people try to make this out to be a pornographic performance by Rihanna. In every scene, she was fully clothed, right? For that one gesture is what she did, you know, to herself. So there's no way this is close to porn. But Rihanna, hold your head up. Don't let these people bully you into apologize or anything else. And finally, we're going to close it out with Lotto. So Lotto did a, a interview and she answered about certain questions and the question came up about Nicki Minaj and the Grammy situation. So I'm going to let you listen to how Lotto handled it. I think Lotto handled it very well. One thing about Lotto is, you know, even if she feels bad, you know, even if she regrets it a little, I don't. I'm not saying she does, but Lotto's never gonna show. She, she's always cool. She's never gonna show her hands. She's never gonna let you know that she might be a little down or what have you. But 
Lotto with her new record out, and this is what I will definitely say about her. Um, she was she did and said a lot of things that a lot of other female rappers were not willing to say, but a lot of them want to say. You know, a lot of the younger rappers are intimidated by Nicki Minaj. I mean, that's just that's just a fact, and where a lot of them want to complain that they they're scared that. Nicki Minaj's fan base is going to attack them, and then if they did have uh, any sorts of support from her fan base, it would then stop. So I give Lotto a lot of credit that she stood on her square and said, basically, I don't give a damn who you are, and I don't care if I lose your fan support. You know, I'm going. I'm just going to tell it like it is and tell my true feelings. So that's basically. She said, I look at myself, you know, as a fan, someone, and they will view me in a whole total different light, and it's disappointing. So, shout out to Lotto, just keep pressing on, you know, both rappers will be fine. <laughs> the Nicki Minaj is Nicki Minaj, Lotto, you know, you're coming into the game, you have an opportunity to, you know, set your own path, and so far it's going pretty good. For someone just really starting out. She's only been rapping a few years. I mean, of course, she's been rapping since she was younger. But she really just really just blew up. So, shout out to Lotto. Shout out to Nicki Minaj. Your boy, Heaven Hollywood, for the IE Network. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video with your friends.